get you through my morning every day. Every morning. Ladies and gentlemen, Adelaide's Jody and Hazy on Nova. Welcome to the podcast. This is a really safe space, but not if you're the fiance of the woman who is very disappointed that you've pulled out of the wedding and will take you to court. Yeah, particularly if you're a dirty bird and you've cheated a bunch of times. Yeah. And maybe you deserve to get sued. Yeah. See what I mean? It's not a safe space. Cop that, you dirty bird. <laughs> you heard, dirty bird. <laughs> Abby in the newsroom joins us in the studio because every now and then she stumbles across a story, Hazy, that just really resonates it's and just hits you in all the feels, doesn't it, Abs? Yep, it does. Is. This story is wild. <laughs> I was reading it, jaw open, just going, what the hell? Yeah. Only, obviously, can happen in America because yep. in America you can sue anyone for anything. It's, it's Isn't that a, right? <laughs> just a legal system that's like, okay, um, someone glanced at you sideways, sue them, sue yeah. them, everything, sue, uh, sue about everything. Oh, yeah. Jeez, imagine, imagine Abby in that situation. If you're in America, <laughs> someone looked at me sideways, someone gave me a resting bitch. Sued, sued, sued. It's just Abby, it was just an armful of lawsuits. I would always be in court if that was the case. Anyway, so this woman, <laughs> it's my face, Your Honour. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the way that I am. It was the way that I was made. The judge is like, ah, I'm suing you. <laughs> <laughs> well, a woman has taken her, uh, who was meant to be her fiancé, to court because he, uh, she essentially sued him for breach of um, promise to marry. Right. Yeah, okay. So sh- they've been together. He's bought her this $10,000 ring. He's cheated a few times. <laughs> he has the red flag. <laughs> he has turned around. She first found out the first time, I'm going to stay. Second time, he said, no, nah, you know what? Engagement's off. Get out, blah, blah, blah. And she thought, you know what? Stuff you. I've quit my job to start look after the kids. I've been looking after you because obviously he sounds like a man child. Um, <laughs> and number three, she just went, you know what? Stuff you. You have stuffed me around and I'm not having this. So off they went to court and she was awarded 50 thousand dollars yes so she won she won that's Whoa. outstanding so women out there if you, if he's not proposing or he's being a turd you <laughs> sue him yeah absolutely and also if cara hayes is listening this morning there's a real <laughs> strong legal case for suing if you're married to a man child <laughs> so <Correct. laughs> i just need food water and attention <laughs> is it too much to ask <laughs> <laughs> then it be- does beg the question. You've been proposed to a few times, Abs. Oh, look, three o'clock in the morning out the front of, you know, a Hindley Street nightclub. Yeah. But I'll take it. Yeah. I'll take it. Would you potentially consider suing someone if they backed out of, like, if you're engaged and they did the wrong thing, would you sue? Oh, uh, I think it. Uh, pro- yeah, probably. Like. <laughs> <laughs> but in saying that, I'm an Aquarian, so we tend to just pretend that you never existed. Like, yeah. ex boyfriends of mine, I would walk past on the street and be like, oh, I've never seen you before in my life. Yeah. I'd just freeze them out. But yeah. there are lots of stories out there when I was sort of having a bit of a research around this story. There's heaps of stories out there where women have sued their boyfriends because it's taken them, like, they've been together 10 years and the boyfriend won't propose. Oh, you can't sue for that. You can't sue for that. Well, I would. I know I've given you 10 years like of my life. Yeah. Where's the ring? See, that's tough. Also, did you say you live in an aquarium? No, I said... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm Dory. <laughs> You're only a what if away from a holiday with whatif.com. You could go to the dentist or the kids' sports. But what if it was a weekend on the coast instead? Book hotels, holiday rentals, apartments and more. What if it's Aussie for travel? Here's what you're waking up to, Adelaide. News. In the news today. Breaking news. Breaking news. What's in the news today? Your post snooze news. Because I tell you, Jade, sometimes it can be a little bit confusing. You wake up and this big old bright world just got so much information just smacks you in the face. Yeah, and it's it can be overwhelming when you peruse your phone on the internet mm. and there's so many different apps and, oh, my God, we're just going to make it easy for you. Dissect it for you. That's right. Yeah, we'll mm. bring in news read Abby. Good morning to you, Abs. Good morning. What are you How are we? Yeah, good. How are you? Good, thank you. It's Friday. Yay. Go off. Um, a bit of drama for... <laughs> I'll be going off later. Um, a bit of drama for Adelaide Metro commuters. So we obviously have the change of time for daylight saving on Sunday, but the clocks on more than 400 buses haven't changed. Oh, now, this has nice. never happened before. They don't know what's going on. They're apologising. But obviously, when people are going to validate their tickets, um, the time hasn't changed. Therefore, it's not, you know, you get off-peak or peak, I don't know, I haven't caught a bus in a while, but... (laughs) 
<laughs> there's off peak, there's peak, and so it's different pricing. Anyway, so they've apologised. They're going to look at doing a free day of travel probably next week at some point. Okay. So yeah, if you're catching the bus, you might have to uh, have a chat with the bus driver. Maybe. Yeah. Can you just get a little refund? Well, you would assume. I think they're trying to do that. So if you've got an Adelaide Metro card and the, your account's linked, mm. I think they're trying to get in contact with people to, to give them or to um, refund them. Mm-hmm. But that would be a process in itself, the amount of people that catch public transport. Yeah. So mm-hmm. Goodness me. So yeah. The reason you have to change your clocks, even if it's manually straight away, if you get up early, is yeah. a reminder of how good it was the week before. <laughs> Correct. So your first week when daylight saving kicks in and you're driving to work and it's 4.17. Yeah. Uh, you know, when the new time and you look at your clock and it says 3.17 you're like oh, I no. should have been in bed still this mm-hmm. time last week I was in bed yeah, yeah. but also moralizing. your phone does it on its own that's fine your, your clock your oven clock well ours did it straight away but back in the day you know you left it for like six months until you changed it <laughs> yeah. my car though I leave so I just leave the full six months and then it's <laughs> right in six months time <laughs> why it work why itself out of it oh, because who could be bothered figuring that out <laughs> oh my god It's honestly it takes two seconds I know but I'm like yeah, so. <laughs> it's just one of those things. It always seems to work out, though, doesn't it? Exactly. All right. News. Newsy. Oh, I'm going to take you to the White House, or should I say, in reference to camera guy Josh, the Bite House. <laughs> Not surprisingly, US President Joe Biden's beloved German Shepherd Commander has been removed from the House, the big house, amid more reports that he's bitten more staff members and Secret Service ag- agents. This dog is out of control. So crazy. So when we spoke about Commander, and as you rightly pointed out, mm. Commander in Chief, more like Commander with teeth. <laughs> <laughs> he had bitten 11 secret agents slash servants. The guys are... In fact, I'm, I'm not aware of the mechanics of the disease. But I could almost bet you that that dog's got rabies. Yeah, I would have to say. Well, it's... Uh, it's frothing at the mouth. It's, it's sunk its teeth into 11 different agents, and who knows where they've been. You know oh. what I mean? Oh, my gosh. And knowing those agents as well, it's probably maybe Commander's onto something. Yeah. He knows well, something that we don't. there was some white powder found a little while ago. Maybe Commander accidentally got to it before anyone else did. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, live audio as well from Commander. <laughs> <laughs> You tell me he doesn't have rabies? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. See you, Commander. News. News, news, news. And I, I would argue that the 11th um, uh, victim would be like, why wasn't it removed after the first victim? Yeah. <laughs> why did it take 10 what? of us what is... for them to take some action? You, you've been warned. When you bite 12 people, yep. you're out. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> Um, okay, I'm. I, I just need to apologise for my obsession with the Netflix series that is Beckham. You are loving this, mm. aren't you? I went to sleep at ten thirty last night, which is outrageous. Ten thirty, I just couldn't <sighs> stop I'm watching it. Up. And I, it was actually really revealing because um, for those who are unaware of the whole soccer sphere, what happened was David Beckham went to a World Cup, was playing for England. Blood rushed to the head, had a moment where he lashed out and kicked someone and got red carded. We've all been there. And so <laughs> people <laughs> people were like literally hanging effigies from the street outside <sighs> of pubs. Like he was public enemy number one. So a good six months abs, he was going to games and he was booed everywhere he went. And English soccer fans are brutal. So he would be on the street and people would get in his face and just shout abuse. And I was absolutely shocked to hear this story. And Victoria Beckham tells it. She would go along to games and there was a chant that they would chant about her while David was on the pitch. And excuse the language, but it was probably one of the worst things you could say about a a wife or a mother. Mm. Um, But this is what they were saying. I'll let her tell the story. Go, Posh. Posh bias takes it up the... (laughs) Excuse my language. Not very ladylike, but 75,000 people singing that. I mean, it's embarrassing, it's hurtful. I remember sitting down and the lady next to me, she turned to me, she didn't know what to say. She said, do you want a polo? (laughs) (laughs) I mean, the first part is not funny. (laughs) 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 She's actually, Victoria Beckham is actually very dry and very funny. Yeah. Um, I'm on board with this, I'm going to watch for sure. Oh, it's it's unbelievable. Mm. And like, you know, I think she'd had children at that stage. Imagine taking your kids along to the game and the... Fans are, chan- fans are chanting that. But what sickened me about this whole thing is all of England turned on him and then uh, Manchester United started having success and then they went to what is the Champions League. So then it's effectively England against Europe, right? European yeah. teams. 
And then they all jumped back on board the Beckham train. I'm like, you guys were hurling abuse at this yeah. dude. He got massive depression, <sighs> like four, six months. Proper soccer hooligans, yeah. next level. Oh. Like the type of situation where you can't have rival supporters in the same pub because they'll genuinely try and kill each other. Yeah. So you think it's a big rivalry between the Crows and oh, Port. It's God. nothing compared to some of the stuff that happens over there. It's it's pretty it's pretty intimidating. And I've been to a game over there, and it's mm. like it's actually you get. What's going to happen here? This yeah. is like a cauldron. Is it going to explode? It's and then the next, scary. the absolute top tier is uh, underage netball, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what a polo is, though. Like, I'm thinking, what, she's giving her a T-shirt? T-shirt, I guess, to wear. So maybe she could she could hide. Be maybe. incognito. Okay. I'm yeah. not sure. Mm. Hey, Joe's eating every morning. As we know, Monday to Friday, we're going to shout your coffee. 6 and yeah. 6.30. Yeah. Another little shout coming up. Yeah, I think David got through it by when he was on the pitch. He would just be like, if you want to be my lover. <laughs> He just sang that to himself over like, and over. Don't talk, Dave. <laughs> don't talk. It's better when you don't talk. All right, picture this. It's twilight, Saturday. All the girls are at Alberton Oval for the AFLW. Yeah. Port Adelaide about to take the field up against Sydney. We've got all the spread, got all the food, we've got all the drinks. Jody's there, just ready for a good time. She's carrying on a bit, to be honest. <laughs> she's carrying on a little bit because Port's got a nice little lead and she's getting very excited for their second win of the season. She's getting very vocal. <laughs> like, even the Albert and Faithful, yeah. who can get very rowdy at times, they can. are looking up at the top of the precinct going, who is that? Who is that? And calm down. What is happening? Yeah. Um, so if you can picture yourself in that little scene, then you need to give us a call when you hear this song, please. How appropriate. It's just another one of these little girl anthems. Yeah. Mm. Got a nice little crew assembled already. So when we play that song, 13, 20, 4, 10, and we're just going to make an arvo of it at the footy, you know? Because oh. us girls, we just want to have fun. Mm. Twilight AFLW game. First time at Albert and Oval. New lights are absolutely schmick. Are they? Mm. Oh, outrageous. I mean, you good. spent half your life at Alberton, so you would know. Yeah, I do. I know. And how a lot I, of studying there. How ironic that you spend every second day at Port Training and you're not allowed to come on Saturday. Oh, it's ridiculous. I can't believe I've been blacklisted. It's okay. I'm going to just turn up anyway. See what happens. Oh, you can. See if I can get through. But I've had a little chat to security, does it? Oh, that's so have I. <laughs> <laughs> You probably know them a little bit better than I do. Yeah. All right, experience AFLW at Alberton Oval. Don't miss the first Twilight game of the season. Port v Sydney, Saturday, 7th of October. Adult tickets are just $10. Juniors and under 18 are free. So when you hear this song, Cindy Lauper classic. Give us a call, 13 20 4, 10, for your chance to hit along. Greg Mullins and Carly Earl. Who? <laughs> Mullo and Carls, these guys are a young couple that have spoken of their shock at receiving a parking fine while giving birth. Oh, no. What about that? No. And, and parking inspectors, they don't have a great reputation, do they? No. No. And I... I think it's the outfit. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's because they're sort of half-dressed as cops as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you're like, what's going on here? And you're like, oh, actually, no, that's a genuine man wearing a Legionnaire's hat. That's <laughs> <laughs> part of work. But I also feel for them a little bit because imagine waking up every day going, you know, we get to wake up into this job and hopefully make people feel good. Yeah, I know, yeah. Imagine waking up and going, I'm just going to dispense a bit of misery everywhere I go today. Which That'd I, be hard. Yeah, and I've always done the whole... So I've always gone, you know what? If you don't want to hate on people parking inspectors mm. don't do the wrong thing yeah true but yeah. sometimes sometimes there are, there are exceptions yeah so this couple will find 120 dollars for exceeding the parking time limit by just 12 minutes oh, no. after driving to a sydney hospital for the birth of their daughter the beautiful hazel oh my god so the couple contested the fine thinking that a reasonable excuse yes. it is pretty reasonable yeah but weeks later they were shocked to find that the fine would not be cancelled does it say how much it was yeah 120 bucks <sighs> So, and this is where you go, well, if they can't get out of that fine, <laughs> don't even bother contesting any other fine ever. No. That's exactly. been given to you. Oh, God, that's ridiculous. I walked past the women's and children's the other day and there were parking inspectors out mm. and about. just And I just, I thought, 
there are people in there dealing with sick children. Yeah. Like, is that is that the worst place in Adelaide to receive a fine outside a hospital? Maybe. But if that's not going to get you out of it, I've still got the go-to excuse to get you out of absolutely anything, whether it's a parking fine, whether it's a social situation, somewhere where you don't want to be. Mm. Are you ready? Mm. We've spoken about this before. Yeah. Three words. Gastro both ends. <laughs> and you're out. It's got free. <laughs> This is what I keep picturing, though. Can you imagine that husband if he had the absolute audacity to be down the end with the wife going, we've got 12 minutes before we get a fine posh. Like, oh, come on. <laughs> Join Judy's Diary. Dear Diary, a lot of interesting sounds emitted from callers this week. We paid Kayla's phone bill and we couldn't tell if she was happy or completely unhinged. Well, you can consider $457.86 all yours. Oh, my God, thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much. Tell if you're laughing or crying there, Kayla. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I get nervous. Dance for me, dance for me, dance for me, Speaking of Kayla's, our very own sweat queen is embroiled in a fitness fight, 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 and I'm in the battle of my life to say her name. It's between Kayla, it's an ananus, and... Oh, say Kayla, it's an ananus. <laughs> say Kayla, it's an anus. That's just the most offensive way that you could have said it's seen us of all time. It's getting out of hand, to be honest. And it's too late for me to dump that as well. <laughs> Far too late. So you go. had seven seconds. Why couldn't know. you get rid of it? I was just in shock. <laughs> we played songs to song, 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 and I was due for a win. We invited Bev to pitch in and help. I'm not getting this at all. <laughs> Bev singing along. I know it. Oh, I know it too. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, feel yeah, free to Bev. help. Bev. Hello. I need a song name and an artist. That's it. You're real helpful, Bev. Guess I'll just have to pull off this rare and historic victory all by myself. Just after this little hiccup. It is very different sitting here behind the microwave. Mm. Microwave. Oh my gosh. <laughs> It's <laughs> already one zero. <laughs> All right, bring it home now, Jodester. See, unfortunately, no, yeah, no, correct, no. correct me if I'm wrong. No, 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 correct me if I'm wrong. If you say the wrong answer, you're done. You can't then jump in with the Andrew, right answer. Andrew, Andrew, right. you're yeah. still wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Diary, we also drilled down on just how many times a week healthy couples play with their tree frogs. So I remember finding a little tree frog in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like... You, of course, grew yeah. up on a farm. Let's yeah. point this okay. out. Yeah, so there's frogs in all sorts of wild animals all over the place. But this particular tree frog, I just remember going, I need to show Dad. <laughs> I have to show Dad. And I remember going in and... Forcing the door open, thinking it's so strange that there's a chair blocking it. Yeah. <laughs> Got my way through and then still didn't really understand what was going on. But it was a frog. It was a frog that was absolutely shocked out of its life. You should have heard it. <laughs> the frog was like, take me back to the toilet. Take me back to the toilet. Coincidentally, your dad was showing your mum his <laughs> tree frog. <laughs> the frog was like, you don't get a bottle in the hair, Bill. <laughs> There were some near breakups on the show this week. Us with sound guy Todd, who's actually putting this little diary together after we falsely accused him of pronouncing the name of my Battle of the Bangers song wrong. It is a good song. Yeah. It's a great tune. I'll give you that much. What I do love as well is it's uh, our sound guru, Todd, who's just in amongst the best to ever do it. Mm. Todd's a bit younger. Yeah. Yeah. And I've just got a feeling that Todd doesn't know Jimmy Eat World because he's titled it The Middle by Jimmy Eats World. <laughs> Peckish Jimmy? Yeah. It's Eat the entire world. The entire planet. <laughs> yeah, turns out that was producer M's error. Sorry, Todd, you're a unit. Don't kill me. While well, I got mocked for making a very sweet revelation about my husband. Listen, my husband's my best friend, you know? Oh, <laughs> that's so beautiful. Oh, you shut up over there. I married my best friend. <laughs> Well, Hazy simply couldn't marry up the buttons with my voice. If you were born on the 8th of any given month, Ooh, on the yeah. 8th 
face. We didn't really coordinate you fading down the bed. No, you go. <laughs> do you want to do it again? Yeah, yeah. If you were born on the eighth. <laughs> So to our girl Kayla. Kayla, it's an ananus. All the unhinged friends of the show. <laughs> I'm sorry, I get nervous. <laughs> and Hazy's little tree frog. You don't get a fight in the hair, Bill. <laughs> Go off this weekend, kings and queens. All my love, Jody. <laughs> Two songs, two opportunities, there'll be one winner, and the opportunity is a chance to start your Friday right. Yeah, mm. so just have a little think about what song is going to get you up and about this Friday morning. We're going to play it in around half an hour's time. You just need to jump on the Jodie and Hazy Instagram page and cast your vote. Mm. Okay, uh, for Jodie, her selection this week, I mean, there's two old school songs, I think we could say. Mm. Uh, not a fresh hit, they're both throwbacks, but... Two good songs, I will say that. And my song, which is from Jim, Jimmy Eat World, mm. um, the sentiment behind it, I googled the meaning, it says, you don't fit in with the cool kids and you don't play their games, but why should you, right? So that was the motivation behind this song. Oh, that was you. <laughs> oh, no. oh, no, you're a nerd back in Tassie. <laughs> <laughs> I was oh, all, shut I up. knew there was going to be some sort of heartfelt meaning behind this song. Don't raise the emotional <laughs> trauma that was me not being very popular in Year 7 yeah. and 8. I turned things around, though. <laughs> yeah. This is a gay. Yeah. I mean, if you used to get wedgies back at school, <laughs> turn this up. <laughs> uh, we've all been there. But if you were the person giving the wedgie. Yeah. Not the wedgier. So you mean the bully. Yeah. Vote for this song. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I'm just kidding. This is a bully free zone. Yeah. But what I will say, I've been pushing this all week, Jokes. My song, Can't Stop from the Red Hot Chili Peppers, I'm pushing a movement. N-R-H-C-P-O-N. Yeah. And of course, that is normalised Red Hot Chili Peppers on Nova. Okay. We can make this a thing. I don't hate that. Hmm. Do we have a score update? Just some sort of idea about how things are going? I don't know the specific scores, but last time I checked, you had a little bit of a, a lead by about 10 to 15 votes. Okay. Which is quite surprising. Can we just bring in newsreader Abby just for a second? Mm -hmm. Abs, have you voted? I haven't actually. I just mm. thought about that then. Okay. I haven't yet. Well, Subscribe Ab to the Ab movement, Abs. Abs. But see, the thing is, right, because... I'm going to annoy one of you by not voting for you. So yeah. I have two Instagram accounts. I have yeah. my personal one and my business one. Oh, a little right. burner account. Yeah, nice. well, it's not a burner account because <laughs> yeah. it's actually a legit <laughs> business. But I go and use either or, or I, you go and use both so that you guys can't yell at me and be like, you mm. betrayed me. Mm, yeah. yeah, right. Because I'm smart. Yeah, okay. business account. But when you look at it, there's no profile picture and it's just yeah. a whole bunch of <laughs> numbers. <laughs> and boy, oh boy, does that account hurl some abuse. Oh, and no. messages to people saying, hello, I'm interested in buying something yeah. from you, but yeah. you give me your bank account details first. So. Oh, Abby's a secret Nigerian prince. <laughs> <laughs> so you haven't voted this week, haven't we, Claire? Uh, not yet, but I'll jump on now. Well, mm. abstinence isn't normally your thing. So I know it. it's not, is it? That's interesting of me. I've just been so busy, guys. <laughs> Influencing. <laughs> uh, all right, two options. The Middle by Jimmy Eat World or Can't Stop by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Jump on Jody and Hazy. Cast your votes. We're going to announce the winner at 8 o'clock. And coming up very, very soon, Jodes, I need to tell you about a golden retriever who's a very good boy. Mm. She just set a brand new Guinness World Record. Oh, good boy, because I see you as like the resident little team golden retriever. You know, I've tried, yeah, I've tried to do what this retriever's done. Have you? Yeah. Can't get anywhere near it. What <laughs> 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 tells next? Joes, I posed a question to you before. How mm. many tennis balls can you fit in your mouth? I wouldn't have thought one. And you came back and said three, <laughs> which I thought was quite unbelievable. <laughs> so well done. But that is nothing compared to one of the best golden retrievers on the planet, at Finny Boy Malloy. He's a golden retriever from New York City. He has the Guinness World Record for most tennis balls in his mouth. Oh, good boy, Finny, good yeah. boy. He can fit six in there. No. Oh, my very goodness. Outrageous. Six tennis balls in his mouth. So, which is just outrageous. So he became the official re world record holder um, in 2020, but he had to wait all this time to get his paws on a Guinness World Record, 
with his uh, title officially inside the book. That's unbelievable. That's stuff. amazing. And that is a skill in itself. Mm. So 13, 24, 10, and if it's not your pets, maybe it's you. Mm. What's your special skill? Oh, yeah. Everyone's got something. Everybody on this planet, I reckon, has some sort of skill that you reckon separates you from the herd. Well, we'd love to hear from you, and we've got a $150 zone uh, bowling voucher to give away. But can you quickly show me a photo of Fitty Boy with the tennis balls? In the, it's him or her? Um, I him. think it's a him. A little him. Come and have a look. It's and quite we'll, amazing, isn't it? You just sit, you're like, where do those tennis balls go? Oh, Maybe there's one or two sort of hiding up the back, like real squirrel vibes, doesn't yeah, it? Like a mouthful you can of only, nuts. You can only physically see four of them, so where are the other two? Yeah, that's a great question. Hmm. Only Finny Boy McCoy knows a true <laughs> answer to that. How is he breathing? Uh, yeah, good points. I don't think he's holding it for hours and hours, but still, it's a stunt in itself, and that good boy is officially in the Guinness Book of World Records. Well done, Finny. I mean, uh, I'll, I'll kick you off here, Jodes. Yeah, I'll tell you what I can do. I can dislocate my thumb. Oh, don't. Oh, don't. I can dislocate don't. my thumb. No, don't. And put yeah, it back in. Don't. And that's through <laughs> years and years of trauma. That's disgusting. For a good season oh. uh, out of the, the ponderosa for <laughs> the dogs. Oh, stop. I dislocated it early. And instead of going to a doctor and yep. potentially missing five or six weeks, I would just genuinely ignore the pain. And sometimes I couldn't feel it to the point I'm like, I'm not even sure it's attached to anything. Can you stop doing it? But now we've got some sort of feeling back and some sort of connection with ligament, etc. Uh, I can make it go oh, in and out. God! You. Oh, my God. I've got a real finger thing. Like, you know... <laughs> <laughs> You know when people are on the blocks at the Olympics and their fingers bend back? I can't watch that. So let alone what you're doing to me right now. Can you cease and desist? I, or I won't work with you anymore if you keep doing it. I don't think any athlete <laughs> He's like, is that a threat? <laughs> has ever injured their finger on the starting blocks. Well, no, I know, but I don't I don't like fingers bending back. I've got a real thing about it. Yeah, don't get nervous about that. <sighs> um, I've also got some other skills for you. Yeah. I can actually do animal impressions. Can you? Like incredible animal impressions. Yeah. Um, what do you, you want to dog? Yes, please. Already? Yep. <coughs> That's pretty good, isn't <laughs> That's it? That's so good, particularly given your mouth didn't move. <laughs> yeah. uh, I can do a cow. Yep. <coughs> <laughs> That's a great, that's a great, isn't You're it? amazing. What about you? Um, so, I don't think you know this about me, but when I was a small child, I was a jump rope for heart champion. So I, Growing up in the heartland of Tasmania, yes. why are we not surprised? <laughs> so, so we actually went on a jump rope for heart tour of Tasmania. We went round to all the schools all around the map. What, signing autographs and taking photos? <laughs> no, no. Well, my special trick was a front flip into the double dutch. That was my specialty. Um, and we got so good that we were on wind television at one stage on a Saturday morning show. We did a little skipping demonstration. Wow. Yep. Okay. So if you hand me a skipping rope right now, I can do up and unders, I can do triple unders, I can do it all. Yeah, okay. There you go. You just know that there's no skipping rope within about <laughs> three kilometres, <laughs> so you're safe. Because if I pulled out a skipping rope right now and give me one of those front flips into a double dutch or whatever it is, yeah. oh, I'm just not sure. <laughs> I, I never said I could do a front flip anymore, but I can definitely do double dutch. Thank you very much. Yeah, right. S- send a producer over to Rebel Sport. I'll do it. I don't okay. care. That's a really good skill, though. <laughs> Do those skills stay with you, oh, though? Oh, it's only 7.47. It's, not, oh, it's open. not open. Shame. Man, that's such a shame, isn't it? Yeah. It's okay. We'll make it happen. Uh, remember this. We'll do it again next week. Um, your special skill, what <laughs> have you got? Also, I've had four children now, so the pelvic floor ain't what she used to be. <laughs> so I don't know if handing me a skipping rope is going to be uh, a good thing for anyone involved. Yeah. What separates you from the herd? What's what's your special <laughs> skill that maybe you pull out at parties? Maybe you just pull it out to um, spark a conversation? Yeah. Maybe you do it to try and, I don't know, a- attract a lady back in the day. Never worked. No. The old, guess what I can do? I can dislocate my thumb. Yeah. But still, you've oh, got to be in it to win it. Because that's not attractive. <laughs> I can do not. that right now. Uh, we're talking about Finny Boy Malloy. Have a look at him on Instagram. Mm. Jeez, he's a handsome young character. Yeah. Um, he's a golden retriever from New York. He has 47,000 followers and he's just, even though it happened a couple of years ago, officially been inducted into the Guinness World Records for most tennis balls fitted in his mouth with a total of six. <laughs> Little edge. Good boy, Finny, come here. Good stuff. Oh, your rubby belly. Mm. Mm. So we put it out there on 13, 24, 10. What's your special skill? Yeah. What separates you from the herd? What's your party trick? Yeah. Let's go to uh, Joe. Um, Joe, you come to us from Yorks, yeah? Yeah, York Peninsula. That's right. Eat a bag. Oh, jeez. Okay. God's country, am I right? <laughs> yeah, beautiful country. <laughs> okay, Joe, what's your hidden talent? 
Okay, so I can um, suck my tongue back on the top of my mouth to make it sound like a champagne bottle going off. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. All right, All here right. we go. All right, you ready? Yep. <laughs> That's <laughs> not mad. You're a bluff doing your tongue. A lot of people can't do it. So yeah, then. Bit of a party trick. Is that it? <laughs> yeah. No, not really. There you go. Oh, uh, d- d- uh, just one more joke, can you? One more? Yep. <laughs> that's, that's good. It's separate. It's good poetry. Amazing. Like a mini Brenton Ragless. Yes, you can Remember do it. Remember when Rag was doing the Coke can? <laughs> oh, Brenton's cracked another one. <laughs> He's actually very good at it. Oh, dear. Matt from Salisbury North. Good morning, Matt. Good morning. How are you? We're great. Thank you. What's your special talent? Um, so I can sort of drop my shoulder out of, out of its joint. Yes. Oh, no. That's what we're talking about. Hey, let me let me guess, Matt. The ladies love it. <laughs> um, no, not at all. Oh, what? Uh, it, but we... I tell you, it got me out of PE quite a few times. Oh, yes. yeah. And Although, why do you want to get out of PE? That's the best subject. Yeah, when you when you're young, I guess you want to get out of the subjects you can get out of. Yeah, so, yeah fair enough. You just do what you need to do, I guess. Hey, Matt, how did it come from? Where did you first, like, did you originally dislocate it really badly and you just never got a proper shoulder reconstruction? What happened? Uh, I think as growing up, you always just find things you can do. Like, I can bend my thumb. My thumbs go back. Oh, no, 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 no. Stop it. Stop it. We should have. I used to be able to suck my stomach in so that it sort of went up inside my um, ribs and you could just see the two abdominal muscles. Yeah, right. Um, what other? Yeah, there's lots of funny things. Yeah. Hey, Matt, you're my guy. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Matt had a lot of time on his own as a child. Yeah, that's fine. Me too. Oh, oh, oh. Me too. <laughs> good on you, Matt. Thank yeah, you so that's much. Good. Got a genuine, instant connection with Matt. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> but I am going to give the zone bowling voucher to uh, to Joe. Uh, that's a hundred and fifty dollars zone bowling da- voucher coming your way, Joe. Well done. I think you should celebrate with some champagne. Yeah, I think so. Well, it's actually my birthday tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> so, okay. yeah, so I think I will have a bottle of champagne. Oh, Thanks good for on. that. Go yeah, on, please. Lovely. Please pop a bottle for us right now. Uh, oh, well, I'm at work now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just got to work, so maybe that's not a good idea. We, we didn't mean a physical <laughs> bottle, Joe. We just meant make the sound. That's all we oh, meant. Oh, make it again. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, battles of bangers. Yep, nothing divides two people more than a genuine competition and fight for supremacy yeah. for Battle of the Bangers. Two songs going head to head. We get you to jump on the Jody and Hazy Instagram page and vote. Camera guy Josh joins us in the studio. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Two very excellent songs as well. I don't think anyone can be upset. Well, credit where credit's due. I mean, I'm happy if either song wins, to be honest with you. Yeah. And really do I say that because what burns my soul even more is when I lose Battle of the Bangers, but it's a putrid song that Jody's selected. Mm. But then the other flip side of that is that the people have voted for it, so I don't want to offend Jody and everyone else. Mm. So usually I just keep my mouth shut. But this time I spoke, and it's too late for me to dump what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are. Well, you better hope you win. Why don't you just stop talking, champion, while you're so far behind? Oh, God. You th- is that, that new- to myself. You just <laughs> champed yourself. I champed myself. Oh, my God. That's where I'm at. Mm. All right, Hazy, All right. you want to hit that drum roll? Okay, here we go. <laughs> Jody Oddy with the middle! <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Oh, that's the double. That's song, 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 song. And Battle of the Joe's, Bangers. Oh, Joe's I'm the double. back. Oh, my gosh. It's never oh. been done. But is everyone sick? What's happening here? <laughs> Joe's did the double. <laughs> oh, yes. congratulations, Joe. But credit where credit's due. Absolutely outstanding song. Turn that up to the highest volume that you have, please. The winner of this week's Battle of the Bangers at Jimmy Eat World, The Middle. It just takes some time. Are you telling me you built a time machine? Hazy's 
on Miss Daisy. Yep, nothing to see here, nothing to see. Oh, hang on a <laughs> second. It's Friday. <laughs> Let's go, f***ers! <laughs> if you've had a week. That was last season. Get over it. <laughs> 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 hey, today, uh, coincidentally, is World Smile Day. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, each and every year, 6th of October, we get right in and amongst it, so... Turn that frown upside down. Mm. Uh, 2001, Starbucks opened its first store in Melbourne. Um, it was a, their first Aussie store. Uh, so Starbucks obviously an, an absolute institution in America, of course. Mm. Is anyone genuinely craving Starbucks? Kids. Do they, they what? They t- that's how parents get sucked in. It's the kids because they do all these like drinks with cream and uh, flavouring and everything that suck the kids in and then... Poor old mum's like, I just want a skinny cappuccino. I don't want to have to wait for half an hour for you to make a frappuccino. Frappuccino? I don't think I've ever ordered or consumed anything with frap involved <laughs> in it from a coffee place. <laughs> I hope not. Frap. And I hope you never do. Yeah, me too. 2010, Instagram launched in the US via the App Store. You thought, oh, this has got potential. Mm. Mm. See where they go. It's come quite on, hasn't it? Just a little start-up. Yeah, good luck, guys. See how long they last. I remember at the time being like, what's this about? Just photos. Who cares? (laughs) What's the point? (laughs) Next minute, millions of people around the world are lining up for the latest iPhone, whatever. Exactly. Um, 13 years later, I've devoted maybe years of my life to just scrolling my screen by Instagram. (laughs) 2003, Arnold Schwarzenegger became the governor of California. Oh. Yeah, he did. Yeah. He's doing a great job, too, just governing things. Is he still? I don't even know what he does. Is he still the governor? I think so. Is he not? No, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> great job, though. Really led the promised land into a good direction. Yeah. Uh, number one song, October 6, 2008, Womanizer by Britney Spears. Oh, womanizer, womanizer, womanizer. Yeah, let's just uh, link that back to Instagram. And right now, Britney Spears and her work on Instagram is just awful. And she's the reason why you've been attached to your iPhone for oh. the last two years, just watching Britney's Instagram. Yeah, quite, uh, actually quite the opposite. She's the reason I'm on a social media bank. Because <laughs> my eyes are bleeding. Um, what about you just channeling a few of your little SEN vibes? Yeah, here? I am. Sometimes you rub off on me, unfortunately. But Eddie Maguire has become involved in a slanging match with extra long star Jimmy Bartell over a song choice at the MCG during the grand final. Okay, so this is what happens at the Gabba. Every time Charlie Cameron kicks a goal, there is a particular song that blares through the speakers and it gets everyone up and about. Oh, it's just beautiful. Country roads, take me home. Just goes off its face. Yeah. Like, Charlie's kicking another one. We're up and about. Yeah. We'll, play, we'll play in a grand final this year. You just watch. Yeah. And so they did play in a grand final and they decided to play that song at the start of the second quarter. And what happens? Charlie kicks a couple, bang, bang, bang. Neck minute, Eddie's like, oh, they shouldn't be playing that song. Mm. So he got into it with Jimmy Bartell over the song choice at the G. Take a listen. Eddie McGuire sticking up for Collingwood? Weird. What? Why are you booing it? Are you kidding? Why would you boo? The Country sa- Road would be the equivalent of playing good old Collingwood forever. At no, it's not. <laughs> Mate, you are kidding. You saw what happened. We're on top. They're flat. The are game. you that worried that you think... Mate, the, been- that's the ball. <laughs> Who's the song for? <laughs> yeah, you got to appreciate his, uh, his enthusiasm. His passion. He was right, though, because the next minute Charlie's up and about, kicks a couple, and Brisbane are right in it. Absolutely on, on board for yeah. a little unlikely grand final victory. Yeah, but it just begs the question on 13 24 10, give us a call or get involved on the text line 0400 If If you were fortunate enough to kick a goal in a grand final at the MCG, what song do you want to follow that? Yeah, because um, the big fella, Joe Danaher, mm-hmm. he channels a bit of Frozen, doesn't he? <laughs> Let it go from <laughs> So the Gabba goes off to that song, can I just say. I've been to a few games and Let It Go comes on and you get up and you sing your little lights out. Yeah, Yeah, right. You do. Except for all the parents who just want to, you know, end it all. There are a few going hands in head. (laughs) Why? Why? This is my escape. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, What are you going with, Joe? What do you got? Well, there's a... You kick your unlikely goal from full back. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> There's an earworm song that I just could not get out of my head yesterday, and I just think it would get the crowd really up and about. Uh-huh. Way to ruin the vibe. Oh, what? Are you kidding? <laughs> Way to soften up the contest. <laughs> What's going on? That's your theme song. Goodness me. We all know what yours is yeah, because it's your go to every single time. It's easy, isn't it? Mm. Oh, he's kicked a goal from 72. <laughs> Everyone's like, it's happened. <laughs> for the first time, he's kicked a goal, and for the first time, Hinder's got a spin. <laughs> Oh four double oh nine one nine nine one nine. What song would you celebrate? We'll go kicking a goal to. Yeah. What about this um, from Laura, Laura. Golf for your heart. She said, "I love that song from Endor." Okay. See, you know, yeah, this would get the guys up and about. Yeah, as everyone up. trots back to their positions. Yeah, it's good, isn't like, it? Laura from Goldfield. <laughs> She's it's done that it. one from the boundary. I think it might hit the post, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> They're not going to review it. <laughs> we spoke about Commander as well. Commander the dog who's yeah. in the White House, yeah. or as we call it now, the Bite House. Yes. Who has now officially been evicted after <laughs> biting 12 people. Yeah. So he actually texted through as well. Oh, did he? Yeah, he said, oh, this would be my song. <laughs> Another one bites the dust. <laughs> Oh, oh God, Commander, what a card. Uh, and also, like, how Commander's texting with those paws yeah, on an iPhone. I oh, know. Good work. Outrageous stuff. Or maybe he's doing voice to text. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Watch this space. <laughs> All right, if you've got one, text us through 0400 We've been playing girl anthems all week, and that was another one. That was your cue to call to come along and see Experience the AFLW at Alberton Oval this Saturday. So Port Adelaide taking on Sydney. We're going to take your VIP style food drinks all on me. Naomi from Cheltenham, are you keen to come? I sure am. Thank you. How good. First Twilight match for the AFLW. It's going to be amazing, Naomi. Exactly. And you know what? How good because I rang as soon as the song came on, and then... I always get this engaged signal and yeah. then there's obvious regret, you know, that you yeah. can't get through. Yeah, right. And then I got through again, so yeah. I'm very, I'm feeling very lucky. How good's that for Friday? Just work, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'll, I'll write a strongly worded letter to Optus for you as well, yeah. Naomi. Thank you. No, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Adult tickets just ten dollars. Juniors under eighteen are free. But you guys are going to have a hell of a time, Joe. So well done. Yeah, Good stuff. can't Gear wait for, for that. It. Yep, it's going to be so much fun. Girls' afternoon out at the footy. Hey, uh, we do b- birthday payday every morning at eight o'clock. All you have to do to participate is have a birthday, and that's exactly what Chelsea did. Oh my gosh, what a monumental day for us. We are going to Chelsea from Salisbury Downs. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. Confirm that you were, in fact, born on the 17th. Yes, I was. Oh, it's happening. It's happening. Oh, my God. <laughs> Don't stuff this up, Jokes. Okay. Choose the right month, please. One job. We'll see, were you born on the 17th of October? Yes, I was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just fun. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It just what? happens so frequently. What a week it's been, Andrew Hayes. <laughs> yeah, it's been a big week, it's hasn't been it? phenomenal. We've had a lot of fun. All oh, right. Have a fantastic weekend. Go off and go port at the AFLW.